Good morning, sheep farmer, or other small stock enthusiasts. My name is Dr. Paris Rafe, and I'm the product manager for the vaccines and reproductive portfolio from Zoeta, South Africa. Today, I'm going to be discussing with you vaccination against pulpy kidney disease. I will touch on a few other important clostridial diseases which we can vaccinate against, but today I'm going to place a lot of emphasis on pulpy kidney disease, the factors that can lead to an outbreak, and what steps we can take to reduce the impact of this devastating disease in our herds and our flocks. All right, let's get to it. The overeating disease or enterotoxemia is a typically fatal disease of sheep, goats, and less frequently of cattle. It occurs when Clostridium perfringens type D, a bacterium that normally inhabits the animal's intestines without causing problems, begins to multiply and produces a toxin that causes clinical symptoms. It is not considered a contagious disease. Predisposing factors are essential. A faster nutrient passage or diet change can trigger a bacterial overgrowth and excessive toxin production. Type D multiplies in the guts and produces epsilon toxin. The epsilon toxin is absorbed into the bloodstream, resulting in increased permeability of the capillaries. This in turn causes damage to the kidneys, intestinal mucosa and brain. What are the factors that can contribute to the development of pulpy kidney disease in your herd or flock? And these factors include changes in the diet, such as a lush pasture or a heavy grain diet, stasis of the intestinal tract due to a low roughage diet, grazing on fodder crops, high protein and high energy diets, deworming, coccidiosis, the presence of worms and sudden changes in the weather. I'd like to elaborate a little bit more on the fact that both worms and deworming can contribute to the development of pulpy kidney disease in a herd. In a group of animals with a significant worm burden, deworming can mimic overfeeding, as animals no longer need to share ingested material with a worm population. High worm burdens can also negatively affect an animal's appetite, and once they are dewormed, they may eat more than usual, which can also trigger an overproliferation of Clostridium perfringens type D. A high worm burden can cause a slow rate of passage of ingester through the gut, which can lead to changes in bacterial populations. So as you can see, having a look at all these factors, it's very important to make sure that your animals are vaccinated against pulpy kidney disease, as it is very difficult to control all the environmental factors that may contribute to an outbreak. What are the symptoms of pulpy kidney disease? We typically see that it occurs in sheep and goats in, in two age groups, um, 3 to 12 weeks or 6 to 12 months of age. It can affect them at any age, but predominantly seen in, in animals of these ages. And what we, we tend to see is sudden death in well-nourished animals. They may exhibit dullness, depression, anorexia, frothy salivation, uh, diarrhea, convulsions and very, very high mortality rate. Most animals that develop pulpy kidney disease will die from pulpy kidney disease. Gross pathological findings. So the title of the slide might be a little bit intimidating. What it means is what do we find on post-mortem when we have a look at animals that have died due to pulpy kidney disease. What we tend to see is hemorrhages um, under the skin as well as on the heart and kidney. There may be straw-colored or blood-tinged fluid with jelly-like clots in the sac around the heart. The small intestines tear easily and their contents are sparse and creamy. We find that the carcass decomposes within a few hours after death. The kidneys usually decompose more rapidly than other organs and become dark and jelly-like, hence the name pulpy kidney. However, animals can die from the disease without the kidneys becoming pulpy. So the pulpy kidneys in pulpy kidney disease are more likely a result of post-mortem changes than an actual lesion of the disease. Managing the risk, pulpy kidney disease. It is difficult to diagnose pulpy kidney disease as death is often the only clinical sign and it can easily be confused with bloat. There's no treatment for pulpy kidney disease, so prevention is critical. The first defense against pulpy kidney disease is to avoid those situations that can contribute to bacterial growth and toxin production within the animal, such as a sudden change in diet. These situations may be difficult to avoid during normal farm management practices, and thus vaccination against pulpy kidney disease is an important and practical tool in the management. Boosters may be needed prior to high-risk periods. Zoetis offers a range of vaccinations for the prevention of pulpy kidney disease in sheep and goats. 
We have One Shot Ultra 7, which is registered for use in sheep, Ultra Choice 7, which is also registered for use in sheep, and Glanvac 3, which is registered for use in both sheep and goats. In previously unvaccinated animals, a primary course of two vaccinations, four to six weeks apart, is required, followed by annual boosters. Why do we need to use two doses of a vaccine? The first priming dose stimulates the immune system, but does not give long-term protection against disease. The second booster dose stimulates protective serum antibody levels that boost antibody levels in the colostrum and give ewes longer lasting protection. In areas where the risk of disease is known to be high, annual booster vaccinations are required to maintain protection in sheep. Goats require regular revaccination at six monthly intervals in order to maintain effective immunity. Where possible, these booster doses should be given approximately 14 days prior to the time of maximum risk, for example, transferring to lush pasture, introducing grain feeding, and prior to deworming. The risk of pulpy kidney disease will vary depending on farm management practices. It's very important to ensure that animals have immunity to pulpy kidney disease at least two weeks before deworming. It's also very important to ensure that animals are adequately immunized and are protected against pulpy kidney disease prior to introducing grain-based diets. Ensure animals have adequate immunity to pulpy kidney disease before turning them out onto lush pasture. All right, now we're gonna take a closer look at One Shot Ultra 7. One Shot Ultra 7 is used for the vaccination of healthy cattle and sheep as an aid in preventing black leg caused by Clostridium chauvii, malignant edema caused by Clostridium septicum, black disease caused by Clostridium novii, gas gangrene caused by Clostridium sodeli, enterotoxemia caused by Clostridium perfringens types B, C, and D, enteritis caused by Clostridium perfringens types B, C, and D, and pneumonic pasteurellosis caused by Menheimia hemolytica type A1. Dosage and directions for use. It's important that only healthy sheep are vaccinated and the primary vaccination is a single one mole dose of One Shot Ultra 7, followed by a dose of Ultra Choice 7 four to six weeks later. For annual revaccination, a single one mole dose of One Shot Ultra 7 in sheep is recommended. It's important that the entire contents is used when first opened. We'll now take a closer look at Ultra Choice 7. Ultra Choice 7 is used for the vaccination of healthy cattle and sheep as an aid in preventing black leg caused by Clostridium chauvii, malignant edema caused by Clostridium septicum, black disease caused by Clostridium novii, gas gangrene caused by Clostridium sodeli, enterotoxemia caused by Clostridium perfringens types B, C, and D, and enteritis caused by Clostridium perfringens types B, C, and D. Dosage and directions for use. It's important that only healthy sheep are vaccinated. The primary vaccination is a single one mole dose administered subcutaneously, followed by a second dose of Ultra Choice 7 four to six weeks later. Annual revaccination with a single dose of Ultra Choice 7 is recommended. It's important that the entire contents is used when first opened. Both One Shot Ultra 7 and Ultra Choice 7 contain a special water soluble adjuvant, Stimugen, for potent stimulation of the immune system. An adjuvant is an ingredient used in some vaccines that helps create a stronger immune response in animals receiving the vaccine. In other words, adjuvants help vaccines work better. We'll now take a look at Glanvac 3. Glanvac 3 is used for the control of caseous lymph adenitis, or cheesy gland, and for the prevention of enterotoxemia, poppy kidney disease due to Clostridium perfringens type D, as well as tetanus. This product is licensed for use in both sheep and goats. It should be injected under the skin and if possible inject high on the neck behind the ear. The proposed site of inoculation may be cleaned by swapping with cotton wool soaked in antiseptic solution. It is important that this vaccine is kept properly mixed before and during use. The dose is one mole followed by a second dose of one mole administered four weeks later. The first dose should not be given to lambs before the age of three weeks as young lambs are less likely to develop protective immunity to caseous lymphadenitis. A booster dose of one mole given 12 months after the two basic doses should confer lifelong immunity against tetanus but may not do so against enterotoxemia or caseous lymphadenitis. All animals should receive annual booster doses to control caseous lymphadenitis. 
It's important to take note that goats require regular revaccination at six monthly intervals in order to maintain effective immunity against enterotoxemia, or pulpy kidney disease. Sheep may require annual booster doses to maintain effective immunity against enterotoxemia in areas where the risk of the disease is known to be high. Where possible, booster doses should be given prior to the time of maximum risk. For example, transfer to lush pasture, grain feeding, in the case of enterotoxemia. In pregnant ewes and does, if they have not been previously vaccinated, one mole should be injected at the time of mating, and a second dose of one mole should be given about four weeks within the expected date of lambing or kidding. If they have previously been vaccinated, the dose at mating may be emitted. Ewes and does properly vaccinated will not only be protecting themselves, but should also pass temporary immunity to their lambs and kids in the colostrum or first milk, which should protect them for the first six to eight weeks of their lives. All right, thank you all for listening today. I hope you understand a little bit more about poppy kidney disease and the role that vaccination plays in reducing the risk of an outbreak of this disease in your herd. Uh, should you have any further questions about using one of our products, integrating it into your program, you're welcome to reach out to one of your local Zoetis representatives, Zoetis technical managers, or your local veterinarian in order to get specific advice for your situation and level of risk. Cheers.